Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to Fantasia for today. We're going to be jumping into another session of Epic 7L today. Got another account overview for you guys. So we just finished the last RTA season and a lot of you guys have been asking me for my units and builds and since the last one, maybe like three or four months ago, we've built up quite a few units. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, first off, we have our Benny Maru, actually one of the most recent additions to the roster. Uh, I've used him in RTA, he's kind of decent actually, but more so as a pocket pick than as a very consistent counter to anything. Have him on a counter set, uh, he is pretty bulky, so that he survives. People try to focus him down pretty early on, and I've Sigurd's sights so that when he does counter, he gets a little bit of healing. Alright, moving on, we, uh, Sermia is actually not geared right now because I'm not farming uh, any hunts that require her, but we have Ed, who I've been using quite a bit uh, in the season, e even throughout standard v standard matchups, um, even when the opponent doesn't really have too many debuffers, uh, he still works quite well to just constantly apply pressure. Mine's a speed pen build, and he's on my plus 30 Sigurd. Yeah, he's a fantastic unit, and I honestly don't think I can ever improve his gear. <laughs> he's wearing some of my best bruiser pieces. Uh, next up, we have Holiday Euphin, a uh, unit that I kind of geared and wanted to use, but never really found the opportunity to do so, unfortunately. So, yeah, she might be a unit that I end up stripping the gear from and uh, putting onto somebody else. I do need to start consolidating my gear here. She is running Guide to a Decision, it gives her a barrier. Uh, and the unfortunate thing is that when uh, Zeo S3s into her, uh, perhaps I just need to raise my HP or something, but uh, Zeo can break through the barrier from the artifact and then hit her, which means that she won't really, um, she won't really be getting the full benefit from her kit. Uh, moving on, we have Jacko. Got her on a speed pen build. Don't really use her all that much right now, but um, I should probably re gear her, optimize her build a little bit more. She's kind of on a Zer Comet for the extra 15% uh, crit rate here. But yeah, I feel like she's going to be a very strong unit after her buff. Uh, but this is just spare gear that I had laying around that I just threw onto her. Uh, I don't really use attack scaling DPSs all that often. I mostly use HP scaling bruisers because of my playstyle. Uh, speaking of HP scaling bruisers, we got Ken. Now, Ken's actually geared for PvE. He's on a few, uh, like, I-90 pieces that I just don't have anyone else to put on right now. But, yeah, he's fantastic in uh, Nightmare Raid. He's fantastic in Ancient Inheritance. Um, just an overall very solid unit for PvE. Uh, and you can also use him in various um, hunts as well, like Wyvern one-shots and things like that, because he does ignore res with his defense breaks. But yeah, currently he's geared for Ancient Inheritance. Uh, next up we have Fire Ravi, who <laughs> really want to pull out as a tech. I'll probably try using her more often. Uh, against debuff teams, you know, DDR, uh, sorry, in debuff teams, like with DDR, Solitaria, Pirate Captain Fly and the like, I think she has a lot of potential for the rage and just dealing extra damage. On Sigurd Scythe here for the healing and on the S1 to dispel a debuff from the caster. Uh, which I find is probably the best one for general use, unless you're doing something specific. Um, but yeah, not bad. Uh, Soul is not geared because I don't use him for the hunts uh, that I'm currently running. I'm currently uh, farming Wyvern over here. <laughs> we got Aroz uh, joining the squad here. Uh, speed immunity, I haven't really changed his build much. I run him on more effectiveness and speed because I use him in more tempo-based teams. He doesn't really need the effect res. Everything nowadays just ignores effect res anyway, so uh, why even bother, right? Um, next up we have Fire Cecilia, uh, speed immunity. I really do need to update her build and change her, her gear. You see how much crit rate she has? It's because every single piece of gear she has is rocking a ton of crit rate. You know, just look here, you've got like 12 crit rate just sitting there casually on this necklace. Um, but yeah, she, she's uh, pretty decent. Uh, I need to re-gear her more specifically aimed towards countering a Tywin, because I did start seeing him quite a bit near the end of the season. Uh, she's on Adam and Shield, but again, that might need to change as well. She's on the EE that gives her the decreased speed on all enemies when using her S2. That's actually pretty good because now she inflicts two debuffs, the attack down and decreased speed, uh, which means that a Tywin can only cleanse one of them and uh, the other will still stick. 
Uh, next up, a lot of you guys have been asking for Ilanov's build, so she is on a speed pen set build, and she's not rocking a ton of crit damage, but I do have mature sunglasses to help her out with that, and it also helps keep her alive by decreasing some of the damage suffered. Uh, she also has the uh, increased combat readiness by 50% when using her S3. I think it's a pretty good one. Uh, you can combo it with things like Ahmed, and also just turn cycle quite efficiently, which is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, she's pretty good. Uh, I like using her into uh, Earth units, obviously, like Alencia, but you can also use her very effectively into things like Yolha or Last Rider Krow, uh, depending on the rest of your team and the rest of the opponent's team. Okay, next up we got Fire Lilius, um, speed immunity build here, mine's pretty fast, 238 speed, I would like her to be faster, but unfortunately I just don't have that kind of gear, 50% uh, crit rate to synergize with her S3 and her S1 that gives crit chance by 50%, and she's on Ancient Dragon's Legacy to help with uh, matchups against Lua, right, you get to reset the cooldowns of all allies by one, um, and if she procs a crit damage bonus, that's fantastic. If she doesn't, oh well, right? Next up, we got Winter. Uh, Winter has been decent for me, I guess. Um, I really like her on Alabastron for the increased effectiveness and for also the extra debuffs, right? Uh, decreased attack, decreased defense, decreased speed, and uh, what was the other one? I forget what it is. Oh, an unhealable. Yes, all pretty good into units like Destina. Uh, and and the like, you know, you bring her into the cleansers. Uh, 35 effectiveness actually brings her up to 175 effectiveness, which is pretty decent, I say. Especially once Destina's um, uh, extra buff at the start, Spirit's Blessing, wears off, you can actually start debuffing and stunning her. Okay, next we got our Kron. Uh, my Kron is rocking some pretty good gear. Uh, counter resist set. He's on double edged decrescent for some extra counters and extra evasion. And I have him on the extra damage on the S1 because, well, he's on a counter set <laughs> and he's going to be countering. Uh, but yeah, I brought him into a few matches. He did pretty well in this season uh, when I did bring him out. I need to remember that he exists uh, because sometimes. You know, when I fight cleavers and they don't bring a, a stripper, then Kron is fantastic in those situations. All right, next up we got Bihu. Um, didn't really try using him this season, although I did see a lot of other people using him. Uh, I realized in order to use him, he needs to be much faster than this. You want him in the 280s, probably. Uh, he's a good CR pusher, and the dispelling two buffs from all enemies and unbuffable is pretty nice, especially into things like Landy. Um, so I do need to keep an eye out on this. I might consolidate some gear and make him a bit better. Uh, moving on, we got our um, Fire Lydica here. So not really a unit that I use in RTA, but I do use for fun sometimes in Guild War Arena. Uh, she actually does have a 10 Soul Burn Ignore Effect Res strip buffs, uh, stripping two buffs. So it's pretty nice. The only thing is she's fire, so if you're fighting ice units, uh, good luck to you. Uh, Sashe is the artifact that she's on to help push up the team. She's actually pretty good at just controlling enemies uh, by pushing them back with her S3 and on her S1, so not too shabby. I also have her on the extra um, dispel on her S2, which again couples really well with that ignore res. Right, next up we got my Fire Shuri. Um, I actually switched him up a little bit. He's on. He's a little slower now, but he's on speed and unity set. Uh, it's really nice because uh, along with Sword of Judgment, which is another chance to attack again with the basic skill, um, which I could actually change to some of the other ones that increase dual attack chance, but uh, Shuri is fantastic in Expeditions for me. Uh, I use him in, which one is it, the Dark Expedition, yes, to push up the team and turn cycle my Tamarin, which Tamarin turn cycles the team again, and sure, he turn cycles, so it's a whole loop, and if you have Unity, uh, it really helps speed up the process of the, the run, make it more efficient. All right, next up we got Summer Iceria. Um, yeah, speed immunity, pretty standard stuff. I haven't really used her this season at all. I've not been cleaving or playing aggro. She's on a plus 30 version of her artifact, which you kind of need. Otherwise, you're you're kind of inting with uh, the lack of bombs that will be landed. You're going to get 5 percented. I, I can feel it. If you're at plus 27, you're going to get that 5 percent, right? And it's going to hurt. Uh, but yeah, this is her build. It hasn't changed much from the last time. 
Next up we have Melissa, uh, she's on just a free attack and crit set, uh, she is on Blackhand the Goddess to help out with that abysmal crit rate there, but I use her in PvE, uh, just in normal Labyrinth to travel, she's in a pretty high morale team, uh, but hopefully I get to re-gear her and uh, try her out in some RTA and stuff. Uh, she did get reworked a little bit, I think Curse got reworked, yeah, so it's gonna be a little awkward and getting used to, but we'll manage. Next up we got Meru, so counter immunity, she used to have higher attack, but I decided to give some of her gear away to other units. Uh, I believe it was um, Bologna, Emma Bologna, right? She took the weapon, but this weapon's still not too bad on her. She's on magic for friends, which never procs for me when I need it, uh, so that is always fantastic. And uh, yeah, self imprint for attack, to just to boost up that uh, stat a little bit more, but she does rock a ton of crit damage. All right, next up we got Milam. Uh, yeah, this is my Milam right now. She is looking really, really sick. Cause look at that, 1,200 defense, 13,000 HP, almost 200 speed, um, 3,800 attack, and uh, about 315 crit damage. But you're gonna see that, uh, yeah, with the EE, I have her increasing the amount recovered with her S1. And coupled with that, we have Proof of Valor to help uh, keep her alive. I did get a copy of her artifact from the shop, um, but yeah, I decided to... I, I did try it out on her uh, for a little while, but Proof of Valor just is so, so strong. It keeps her alive, even uh, without her evasion, right? It keeps her alive with this kind of bulk. It's super hard to take her down if you have mitigation. And she'll be able to rip that S3 into that Landy that you're so desperately trying to kill. Um, yeah, very, very happy with this Milam. Definitely one of my MVPs this season uh, near the end with that Proof of Valor tech. Next up, we got Politis. Uh, haven't really used her all too much. I think occasionally I did tech her in. I think I need to change up her build since I'm playing standard. I might want to make her bulkier with some resist and effectiveness. Uh, just forego the damage, right, and just make a degen Politis. I think that would be quite nice with something like Abyssal Crown for, you know, extra pain and suffering. Right next we have Carrot. Um, Carrot's actually been seeing quite a bit of use uh, here and there. She's pretty decent, especially with the rise of Landy into stuff like LR Crow. Um, Carrot is a pretty decent counter. I know that Milam is a is a better counter, but Carrot's still pretty decent if you if you need her in a pinch. Uh, I've got Etica, Etica Scepter for the extra decreased skill cooldowns at the start of the turn, just to help her cycle her S3 and just keep spitting those burns out. Um, and, and this works quite well. Alright, next up we got Roy Mustang. Uh, used him actually a few times. There's been um, instances where I don't play aggro or anything and he just fits so well into the team. He's just protected by barriers because I do run a lot of those this season with Arwell, uh, Crimson Armor with her protection set. So Roy's pretty well protected and he's running books so that he can soul burn his S1 and get that S3 off a little bit sooner. He's on lifesteal um, and I don't have him on pen set but I also don't have him on any imprint concentrations. So his, his stat line's not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, next up we have Acades, who I actually do use in Nightmare uh, Raid and other PvE content. Uh, do want to give her some better gear. She's just rocking a bunch of free gear at this point, plus whatever this ring is. Um, yeah, I, I do want to get her re effect resist up to about 200. Uh, that'll make her pretty stable in Nightmare Raid, uh, but that's a work in progress and kind of a low priority. She's on the uh, effect res EE. Uh, after she uses her S3, and she's rocking Wondrous Potion Vial for the extra cleanses. Alright, next up we got Ning Ning, my fastest unit on my account here. She's just running speed in a broken set. Uh, almost 300 speed, right? 296. She was 297, but I, I stole a piece from her for somebody else. I think for Flitica. Um, but yeah, Doctor's Bag to help out with some of the cleansing and healing that, you know, she lacks in her kit. Uh, but she's a pretty decent support unit. I just need to slow her down, give her more bulk, and uh, yeah, that will be probably for the better. Because at this rate right now, I kind of... This is really great for aggro, by the way, but because I'm playing standard and I'm fighting... Um, fighting units like C. Lilius and stuff, I do want to be able to go... 
slower, just so I can take a second turn, I can cleanse things, I can um, dispel stuff, I can push people back. Yeah, so we'll test that out. This this speed has been pretty nice uh, occasionally, but it's so niche that I don't think it's worth having this type of uh, quality of gear on her. Uh, next up, we got Shuna. So you guys haven't even seen the Shuna debuts yet, but I've been using her in RTA, testing her out in Guild Wars, and she is so much fun. This is essentially budget hand guy, by the way, so if you don't have ML Calric and you want him, well, look no further than Shuna. She essentially does the same thing, but just kind of scrambled up in her kit. Um, she does have a dispel, right? But instead of dispelling from one person, dispels two from everybody. Uh, she has a chance to do attack down on everybody instead of just one person, like ML Calric says too. But she also has barrier. Uh, just like Emil Calric, and she also cleanses as well. Uh, the additional bonus is that she puts people to sleep and that she heals on her S1. So I got her on Celestine to help out with that bit of healing, and she's on a speed HP set, which um, is working out quite well. It brings her bulk up to a pretty respectable amount, and she has pretty decent effect res too. Uh, she is currently on the EE that gives her extra sleep chance, uh, just to make her a bit more consistent. I do like some of the other effects too on the, the S2, but I think this is the best one for me right now, because if I really want to sleep somebody, I want to make sure I sleep them and not have to face two 15% checks. Right, next up we got Tamarin. Uh, Tamarin rocking the Magra's Tome, uh, PvE, obviously, and she's just rocking the um, 100 plus effectiveness, 100 resist, to resist all the uh, debuffs from the Dark Expedition, from the little cannon that's resetting her skills, and the effectiveness is to help strip uh, buffs from essentially all the Nightmare Raid bosses and Expedition bosses. Uh, but yeah, nothing much to say about her, she just is the queen of PvE. Next up, uh, we got Shu. So we had the Queen of PVE and Tamarin. Now you have the the Rat of of the New York City or something. I don't know. <laughs> but she's rocking counter pen set. Uh, nothing much to say about her. She just absolutely demolishes everything. And uh, yeah, Snow Crystal to help boost up her combat readiness. Uh, she gets combat readiness with her S1 too, which makes her really annoying. And uh, she has the Fush EE because what else would you use? This is what literally makes her so toxic. Um, but yeah, that's that's my shoe. She heads like a truck. Uh, and she's actually running HP um, percent neck, by the way. That's why my HP is so high. She has HP percent neck and HP percent uh, ring. All right, next up we got Luna. Uh, Luna for PVE as well, actually. I use her in some expeditions. So she's just there to kind of demolish things. <laughs> uh, I turn her skills off usually, so she's just on Ancient Sheath. So it does extra damage on her S1. Uh, yeah, she works quite well. There's nothing much to say about her here. I just used the 15% combat readiness push on this EE2. Uh, uh, yeah, she completely demolishes the fire expedition, which is quite nice. Next up, we have Karina. Um, yeah, this is my Karina build. 2,800 defense, almost 18,000 HP. I would like to get her HP up a little bit more, but uh, the, the effect resist is very, very important on her, in my opinion. Got a plus 30 rocket punch gauntlet, and she just does Karina things, right? You just don't die, and then you you one tap and one shot things. Also great into evasion. I've been picking her quite a bit into things like Aiden, um, and, and she definitely gets the job done, especially with, of course, the rocket punch procs. Next up, we got Krow. Um, yeah, he's just kind of never moved from these two HP pieces here. Usually he has immunity stuff that makes him a bit faster with speed boots, but I use him just in Guild Wars, so he tanks Rimuru's and it's good enough. This <laughs> 30k HP, almost 2,000 defense, right, with Aureus, and I currently have him on the um, decrease the um, skill cooldown for his S3, but I would like to get him on the S1 Provoke EE, that will get him to 100% provoke for the extra consistency. All right, next up we got Rose. Um, yeah, just use her in Ice Expedition. She doesn't really need the best stats. I would like to get more speed on her, but it's not really required. Uh, that's the really only thing she needs besides a little bit of bulk to stay alive. But to compensate for the speed, I went for Steadfast Gatekeeper uh, to help push herself up so that uh, she can take more turns and turn cycle the team. She's also on the decreased skill cooldowns for S3, so again, the same same thing. Replenish the attack buff and decrease the skill cooldowns, or sorry, push up the team. 
yeah. Uh, moving on, we got Summer Break Charlotte. So I'm quite excited for her buff that's going to be coming up. Mine's on a Lifesteal Unity set. Uh, I used her a couple times in the season. Didn't really, um, didn't really use her all too much. She's a little risky to use, but if your opponent has a bunch of fire units uh, and they pick and uh, them too early and they trap themselves in draft, uh, Summer Break Charlotte, along with things like Karina and Arya and Shu, they're really great units to trap your opponent with. Uh, currently have her on Portrait, but I might switch over to mature sunglasses i don't know waiting for her rerun and get so i can get another copy but yeah ilanov stole the mature sunglasses but until uh she gets a buff she'll just be on portrait for that extra little bit of damage um yeah so moving on we got our tywin so he's on speed and hit set this is the most cope necklace you'll probably ever see i know i'm gonna have to bleach your eyes now um <laughs> so i'm still looking for an upgrade for him but rockin 250 speed pretty decent bulky uh knight stats might actually change his artifact to have him on rise of a monarch because he's so fast he can like, I'm thinking, like, you know, he'll keep uh, putting a barrier up on somebody who needs it, which is pretty good at protecting them. But perhaps I'll just switch him to a damage mitigation artifact. Who knows? Uh, I have him on the combat readiness uh, EE, so pushes up the person in the back line whenever he uses S1, so it's pretty nice. Uh, I have used him a couple times in RTA this season. Again, he's kind of sort of like a pocket pick, but he's quite nice with his passive now. I need to start learning to use him more. I think he has a lot of potential in the meta with his defense break. All right, next up we got uh, Karin. So Karin here on a destruction hit set. She's just here for Wyvern. In fact, she's right there, hard at work. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait! They <laughs> they just failed there. That's okay. Uh, Daydream Joker though for the extra bit of damage, and we got her uh, bleeding EE so that she can stack more buffs on the Wyvern so that Alexa can go for the one shot. She's on the crit chance imprint for the team. She doesn't need it herself because uh, she has just enough crit rate to crit the wyvern. You get plus 15 uh, crit rate whenever you attack somebody that you have advantage over. All right, so moving on, we got uh, Kisei. One of the units actually re-geared in the last week of the uh, season, and she's looking pretty nice. Over 280 speed and pretty decent damage. I had to go ahead and put this piece on her, this event crafting piece. So that was nice. Pretty much perfect rolls here with speed and crit rate to, to allow her to use a build like this. Uh, have her on Windrider for right now. It increases her damage and it allows her to go back into stealth so she doesn't have to rely on her S3 every time, which is pretty good, especially since uh, in long Bruiser v Bruiser fights, standard v standard, uh, if you have something like Kisei, you want to keep her alive. Uh, she's on her S3 EE that gives the increased, uh, sorry, decreased buff durations. Uh, so she can essentially strip immunity on people at the start of the fight and reset their skills. Alright, next up we got um, Ron, who I didn't really use at all this season, but I did have him geared. Uh, he's pretty slow for Ron, so 293 speed. Uh, got a little bit of damage stats, not very consistent because that crit rate there. Um, but yeah, he just kind of exists to do what he does, you know, five pieces of speed set to just make him even faster. <laughs> That's how that works. Uh, Silver Rain for the uh, attack buff for another ally to, to kind of help, right? Because my Ron is not a great damage dealer. I should probably just put him on RNL to troll people, but we all know that if I put him on RNL, it's never going to proc. Next up, uh, we got Summer Alexa. Yeah, Rage set. Uh, currently, of course, I'm, I mean, I'm farming Wyvern. Uh, rage set with crit set and just enough crit rate to crit the Wyvern consistently. We got Daydream Joker as well helping us out here. Um, yeah, overall, not too bad. Uh, she does get the job done. I just need to kind of tweak my Wyvern team. It's not very consistent at the moment, but we'll, we'll get that uh, fixed up soon. Okay, next up we got Cerise. Uh, she is used in the Light Expedition. That's essentially it. Um, that's Yeah, that's basically it. She's on some bunch of filler gear, level 70 necklaces and stuff. Uh, she's on this Confeal though, because when you do single target attacks, uh, you can defense break with her. And that's pretty nice for the Light Expedition, where you need consistent damage to continuously break that boss's barrier. 
Alright, next up we got, um, Flan is not geared. Next up we got Lua. Uh, yeah, so Lua's been slowed down quite a bit, actually. She's <laughs> a bluff Lua. I, I use her in my arena defense and my guild war defense. So now you guys know, if you find me in guild wars, that Lua's a bluff. Um, she, <laughs> she's only 260-something speed, which I, I assume probably uh, messes some people uh, up when they attack my tower. Uh, Guiding Light here, just because... She's so slow that she was not going to be taking the first turn. But I should be tweaking her build a little bit to give her a bunch of effectiveness. So much so that she will not need to soul burn to debuff cleansers. Uh, that is my goal, but we'll see if it actually works out. Right, next we got Riza Hawkeye. I've been trying to find a place to use her in, but she's just so difficult to get to work. I might need to switch up her build to make her just completely like bulky and tanky right and uh, just have her as kind of a support uh, DPS unit maybe like a hundred crit chance or something but not a ton of crit damage like I might switch out a crit damage necklace for something else uh, she's currently on guiding light which is okay for her uh, if I make her a bit more bulky I might be able to switch out her uh, artifact for something a bit more supportive but we'll see Next up, we got Seaside Bologna. I've been using her a little bit here and there in the season. Uh, Life Steal with Immunity, uh, not too bad. Good damage, good build. Uh, I, there's nothing I would really change about her here. She's Rock and Drink for that extra um, splash damage, but yeah, it's kind of difficult to pull her off because she is so slow. But that is just how it is right now with so many units that can uh, control your control your team, right? Arwell with a full buff strip and stun, ML Cowork with a full buff strip and attack down, essentially rendering her damage useless. A um, lot of factors to consider. You're definitely going to need to run her in a very supportive team if you use her in RTA. Speaking of supportive team, uh, Arya here, uh, lifesteal and resist set, she's not that great. My, my Arya is horrible actually now that I look at it. The health is way too low. Uh, I would really like to get her more bulk, but my gear is just not rolling in that fashion. We got Fairy Tail for a Nightmare to help out with some damage and uh, stripping some buffs when she counters and does her shenanigans. But yeah, I, I really do need to find something better for her. Uh, mages are kind of hard to build HP on, so we'll see if we can get more upgrades with some Banshee materials. Alright, next up we got Dizzy. Uh, did not actually use Dizzy this season very much. I think I used her a little bit, but she, a counter resist set, I mean, she the the mentality behind using her is like same as Pirate Captain Flan or Solitaria. If your opponent doesn't bring a cleanser, or there's a bannable cleanser on their team, uh, just pick Dizzy and then you can absolutely decimate them with an S3, which decreases speed attack and hit chance, so they're basically never taking a turn and when they do, they're not gonna hurt you at all. Um, I have her on Ayla Violin because she's on counter set, but if you really wanted to, you could troll with some, uh, some things like Abyssal Crown, right? Or you can have her whole book for more utility for the team. Speaking of utility for the team, Dominial here, uh, also on counter and immunity, so she is actually rocking a knowledge seed because she's probably going to be going down, uh, <laughs> seeing that when I do pick her, I pick her into cleave, so it's really mostly for this, you want to get that reflect buff up for the team, and then uh, just let your opponent keep attacking your K-Ron or your BBK, who's immortal, and they'll, they'll eventually just uh, delete themselves. Um, I haven't really used her this season, I did use her in the previous season, and she is really fun in Arena. So definitely, uh, if you have her laying around, give her a go. Uh, K-Ron with Dominion in Arena against really aggressive teams that don't really have a stripper or a consistent stripper uh, is really, really fun. Alright, next up, we got um, we got Ida. So I don't really use my Ida. I don't play aggressive or cleave. Uh, she's actually kind of gotten some worse gear here. Kind of changed out her necklace and uh, ring because I have to give those to Kisei. But yeah, she's still looking alright. She's still usable. We got Taga Hells here to soul burn with. I use her in actually PvE Nightmare Raid, <laughs> funnily enough. I uh, use her in Nightmare Raid for um, the Carcanus, I believe it is, the fire boss. Uh, because of her AoEs. Usually I just switch her off her Daydream Joker and then take her into that. Uh, next up, we got Fairy Tail Tenebria on a full damage nuke build uh, with Kaladra here as an artifact for more damage. As you can see, she's there in the background. She clears the first wave of Wyvern, so if you want to check out, by the way, all my hunt stuff, 
uh, go ahead and check it out on the channel. Uh, I go through all the hunts, all the teams I use, and they're all pretty accessible. Uh, I try to keep my teams as budget as possible. I tend to not build units exclusively for PvE. Okay, next up we got, um, well, Lulica here is actually supposed to be geared for Kades along with Sermia, but a couple of pieces had to be borrowed for other units. Um, yes, next yeah, next unit we got Shepherd Jenna. So I didn't test her out this RTA season because I kind of built her near the end when I was uh, really trying to climb. But this build is looking pretty nice. Look at that effectiveness too, right? And she's on books just so you can soul burn herself. I'm going to be testing her out for a more anti-standard fight. So if my opponent has things like Emil Calric or things like that, uh, and pretty slow units, right, with damage mitigation, perhaps an Arwell or something like that, we can perhaps use Jenna and go a bit more aggressive. But I do need to have a few more units that are fast, like really fast speed contesters, to offset the fact that Jenna is pretty slow. Uh, yeah, but I definitely can't wait to test her out. Really excited for her. Uh, I've been looking forward to opportunities uh, to use her. Okay, next up we got Ahmed. So Ahmed here, 280 speed almost. Uh, she's looking pretty decent with her bulk and her effect res. I have her on Fan of Light and Dark. I did have her on um, Unfading Memories before, but decided, you know what, let's just go for this and have that uh, crit damage bonus. Uh, if we can buff that on a Landy against an LR Crow, we're going to be dealing mass amounts of damage. And there were a few uh, matches where I did go a bit more aggressive, and it did work out pretty nicely. I might try to invest some more into her, make her a bit faster, but I don't really want to gimp too many other speed units uh, just to go into her, because um, my playstyle doesn't really revolve around her. She's just nice to have and steal from my opponent occasionally. All right, next up we got a Momo, so she's on a pretty decent build right here. Uh, the only thing is that her artifact is kind of kind of doo doo because I don't really have too many good Soul Reaver artifacts laying around right now. So she's on kind of a filler piece. Uh, but once I get another artifact for her, I think we'll be in a pretty good spot. Next up, um, oh, Dn actually got stripped here for. Uh, Elena, so Elena should be rocking um, Magaraha's Tome, if I can go ahead and grab that for you guys to see her stats. There you go. So these are her stat lines here. She's a little bit slow with her speed, but with with her um, uh, extra CR push from the S2, plus the CR push from the Magaraha's Tome, that's going to be 50% combat readiness. So if the opener is around like 300 speed, you're definitely going to be cutting in front. Uh, so that's pretty good. Have her on a really high effect res, got her on effect resistance ring instead of an HP one, uh, because that's really her job, is to stay cleansed and then cleanse the team, right, with her S1, with her S3. Um, so that's really her job here. Uh, she, the couple times I tried picking her, she did get banned in RTA, so I guess she did her job. <laughs> uh, but I do love using her in Guild Wars, she's been fantastic there. All right, next up, uh, Alencia. So yeah, injury build, pen set. She's looking good. However, my only issue with her is that when I try to pick her into things like a Ravi or other injury units, uh, she struggles against really fast units. So if your opponent has openers like C. Lilius or Luas or stuff like that, uh, they can really, really impede on your Alencia success. So you gotta build a strong team around her. I actually do fill in some of her crit rate for a bit of turn cycling here with Ed's artifact, so we can get extra crit damage and extra speed up to four times, which is pretty considerable, seeing that uh, typically you're gonna be using her S1 quite a bit over the course of a match. So by the end of it, you'll be, you know, you'll be zooming. Okay, uh, next we have Lilibet. Uh, some of you guys have been asking for a Lilibet debut. Uh, I've actually used her in Guild Wars, but we'll try using her a bit more. She's on a full attack set and a uh, crit set. All these pieces are just really weird, like they just have a bunch of speed on them, like 10, 17, 19, 15. Don't know how they got all that speed, but they do, and the stat line looks pretty decent. Uh, her attack looks a bit low for an attack set unit, um, but yeah. It's looking all right. It's okay. Uh, she does have extra damage on her S3, although I do want to change that over to the cleanse on S2. Let's see if I 
even have that one. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, see, there we go. Dispels two uh, debuffs from the caster. So she gets the uh, snip snip effect. I don't really need the extra damage on S3, uh, but this allowing you to cleanse is pretty nice because it pushes you up and then you can take extra turns. All right, next up we got, uh, well, what do we have? We got Rimuru. So Rimuru here with speed and penetration got that Draco plate for the extra crit damage and a little bit of damage reduction. Um, I don't really use him because I'm scared that he's just gonna explode, but then again, that's kind of his job in RTA on this type of build is to do a one-for-one -one trade, right? You take out a really high uh, priority target on their team, and then Rimuru just kind of implodes afterwards, uh, after he's done his job. So I do need to try to get out of that mindset, that mentality of like, ooh, I'm scared to pick him, I'll be down a unit. Uh, his job, if he's successful at it, he can take out one of the highest threats on the opponent's side, and then it'll be a pretty even match. Okay, next up we got Zahak. So yeah, speed and penetration got him on sim uh, got him on symbol of unity, and he's on the uh, increased attack EE for himself and um, one of his teammates. So that's uh yeah pretty standard Zahak. I could make him faster. I really could. But I do need that damage, because I do use him in, in other modes besides RTA. I might try him out on the faster build, but I, I really like the damage that he's currently rocking. Next up we got Armin. Uh, unfortunately I don't have more Elbrus, otherwise he'd be on, uh, she'd be on Elbrus over here. But she's on counter and immunity, rocking some pretty nice stats, honestly. Just that she's zero speed. Um, but yeah, she's on the extra EE to uh, proc more counter attacks. So... That's, that's what we're working with right now. Next up, Charles. Um, ignore the artifact on him. I don't have enough Elbruses. <laughs> but he is on the extra chance to go into an S2 from an S1 on the counter penetration set. Uh, should have about 18k HP if this artifact was a real one. Uh, with pretty good bulk and pretty good damage. Uh, the, the only issue is that he's no shoe, so therefore he doesn't really see play. My man Charles... He, he needs something. He needs something. Smilegate, come on. Bring Charles back to his former glory. So, speaking of uh, glory, we have a glorious knight here, Christy. Uh, she is rocking some good bulk and a lot of effect resistance. I don't really have um, amazing gear on her. It's kind of just filler gear here. But, uh, yeah, I just tried to pick extra spare piece of gear that had a decent amount of effect res to put on her, but ideally she can go even higher than this. She's on Bastion of Perlusia to give that uh, barrier and immunity for the person in the back line, which actually works out quite well because with this effect res that she has here, uh, the person in the back line is probably not going to get their buffs stripped, so they're going to keep that immunity, they're going to keep that extra barrier as health, and it won't be dispelled by anything. Right, next up we got Falconer Clary. I might switch her build over to something to solo Banshee. I might have her on a slow Banshee farm. Uh, but she's currently on Nostalgic Music Box, Rock and Revenge set. Use her sometimes in Guild Wars and sometimes in Arena, uh, when my opponent's teams are really slow and I can control something. Uh, a little bit of effectiveness to help round out some of the stats, but again, uh, she she's looking okay. I just probably will change her to do uh, Hunt Duty, where she can solo the Banshee. Alright, next up, uh, got Mort, the great Mortelix. Used him a lot early in the season, you guys know. Uh, but I brought him out as a pocket pick later on a couple times. He's pretty decent to Karina, actually, if she's the biggest threat on the opponent's side. Uh, speed pen set, pretty good bruiser stats, kind of like my Ilanov stats, actually. Uh, very comparable. He's on the Elber's Ritual Sword right here. Uh, so, sorry Charles, we have to give it to Mort. Uh, but yeah, he also has the extra um, turn duration for his critical hit resistance on his S2. Okay, next up we got Senya. Ooh, I used her so much in the last week of RTA in the previous season. Uh, I do want to find some better gear upgrades for her because stuff like this is just not the greatest thing. Uh, yeah, see, see the, some of her gear is not great. But she's on Spear of a New Dawn for that extra damage. And I have her on the Lifesteal EE here for some sustain. It helped out quite a bit, but I might try out the Greater Attack Buff EE for some extra damage. See if we can, uh, you know, delete a few people with that. But yeah, I want to get her with more resist and try to increase her bulk a little bit. 
but I do like the rest of her stat line. It's just I need improvements on these purple pieces of gear. Okay, next we have Yolha. So Yolha has been a knight that I've been using um, instead of Arwell when my opponent's going pretty aggressive. So Yolha's pretty decent into stuff like Aiden. You can always nuke her through her evasion. Uh, she's basically like a green crow, but she can heal herself. She can give barrier. She can push herself up. She can redirect provoke, uh, and and she can. Um, yeah, she, she, she's just really, really strong. She also has reflect damage, too. So when, when Aiden and stuff are trying to hit her, uh, they're, they're really low HP and squishy, so they end up finishing themselves off. Uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of her build, I don't know if I would improve anything. She's kind of perfect as is. Ideally, maybe a little bit faster or something, but she gets the job done, right? When she gets low enough, she pushes herself up, so you don't need her to have amazing speed, and she doesn't need to go first or anything, because, I mean, you got to provoke on an S1. What are you really doing with that, right? All right, next up, we got uh, Celine. I actually do want to try out a new Celine build, so this kind of gear might go to somebody else who's a bit more fortunate. Uh, but, yeah, Celine, I want to make her a bit more bulky so that she can survive hits. Because if you pick Celine and she just dies, it's not really too great. But if you make her bulky enough and she just kind of sits there, then yeah, you're in a really good position to just um, <laughs> just kind of finish your opponent off. Because your opponent probably, uh, if they if they let Celine through, they plan on finishing her off early so that they can use her skills. If they can't finish her off, they can't use her skills, and then she applies a ton of pressure to them. So I really want to try regearing her. Uh, but she is on the highest uh, attack EE, not the stealth EE. I might try out the stealth one, but it really depends. Okay, next up we got Sid. I want to re-gear my Sid as well. I want to re-gear him to be a more of a nuke. So, currently he is a bit faster at 265 speed. I know this is pretty slow for Sid standards, but I might slow him down even more and just make him a full-on DPS nuke Sid uh, who can just delete things. I want to try it out, but... Again, it requires a whole account overhaul. Uh, currently, he's on Manica just to increase the uh, crit chance on his single target hits. And he's on the advantageous uh, S3 EE, which is uh, insane that they even gave Sid an EE. Okay, next we have Vildred. Uh, looking pretty nice with that attack stat, actually. So, yeah, when I, back when I used to play speedier units, you know, we went for a SSS Vildred for that plus 12 speed imprint. Uh, but currently, he's you can see he's on PvE duty. <laughs> Just kind of used him in last week's Hall of Trial with the Cruel Mischief. But typically, he's on um, sort of winter, or sort of summer twilight. There it is. Yeah, typically, he's on this artifact here. And, uh, yeah, he has extra damage dealt with his S3. Next up, we got Bologna. Can't wait for Iron Fan to get buffed, because Bologna's going to be pretty good with that in PvE content. Uh, have her on speed and hit set. She has a little bit of damage, a little bit of effectiveness, and got, um, got Riza's, uh, what is it called, artifact here to help round out some of her stats, right? Can help her sp uh, get some speed to turn cycle, help her with some effectiveness to help her land her debuffs. I have her on the Dispel a buff from uh, all enemies with her S2 instead of the Defense Break, because in Azimanic you want to be able to dispel the rage that the boss has. That's typically where I use her. But if you use her in other content, you probably want to have that extra uh, Defense Break chance, because it's only an 80% chance here, but you can get it up to 100. Alright, next we got uh, Iseria. So, yeah, a couple of Tomarin used in Expeditions, pretty good PvE unit. Got on Song of the Stars for some target debuffs to complement her defense breaks on her S1 and her um, and her S3. Not much else to say about her. Uh, and then we have our Landy. So Landy on plus 30, Guiding Light, still never procs. Uh, when I need her to. Speed, crit set, pretty squishy, but pretty decent damage and very good speed. She's one of my tempo units, so I like bringing her into uh, slower opponents or opponents with a lot, of deba or a lot of buffs so that I can take advantage of them, gain fighting spirit, and just keep looping my team with speed buff and combat readiness. She works really well with Aroz and DJB. Those are kind of part of my combo uh, for my tempo team. Uh, but yeah, she works really well. I have considered uh, playing a slower, bulkier Landy on Bloodstone, but it 
Yeah, it's nice to have a little variety of units, so it's good to have units that are a bit faster, as well as units that are a bit slower for a standard v standard matchup, just so you can kind of diversify your kind of tempo and pacing, and the combinations of units that you can bring. Next up we have Rom. Now Rom's stats here are not really what they seem. I can slap her on Time Matter for now, but uh, this is typically the stat line you'll see on her. It's just that she'll be running Kaladra instead of this, but because we're using Kaladra with our Fairy Tail Tenebria there, uh, yeah, that's been kind of taken for now, but typically when I do Expeditions, Ice Expos, she's there nuking things. She's just on an Attack Pen set. If you had her on Rage set, she'll do even more but I don't have a Spear Rage set for her to use right now, so this will do. Okay, next up we have uh, Destina. Oh my god, I've been, have I been using her so much this season? Uh, yeah, pretty decent bulk here, and good speed with uh, decent resistance. I would like more, but uh, she's just kind of hard to build with a ton of resist and bulk and speed. But you get 15% resistance from Guardian Ice Crystals, and she also starts the uh, match with uh, Spirit's Blessing, which gives her 60% effect resistance. So my Destina is rocking about 290 resist at the start of the battle, which means she's still going to get debuffed by Zeos. Uh, with her EE right here, I have her on the increased combat readiness by an additional 20%. It's typically the best one here. In PvE, I do switch her out to the other one, this one here. Uh, I use it in the uh, Nightmare Raid against Julieve Council, so you get to dispel an extra debuff when you're using your S1. Right, next up, we got Rin. Uh, Rin's just temporarily on Eternus. Um, <laughs> Celestine is typically what she'll be on, but that is currently being used by Shuna. But this is my Rin. I haven't really used her all that much. I do want to start using her. I might need to retweak her gear, though. Uh, she is on kind of uh, doo-doo gear right now, but we'll work on improving it for the future. Okay, next up, though, Rowana. More Soul Weavers, I know. Uh, Rowana is currently on um, self-imprint with Idol's Cheer. She's typically actually on Stella Harpa. So if I put her on that, then uh, she's used in PvP. But with Idol's Cheer, I have her for the Ice Expedition so that she can push up Rom even more and turn cycle her. Uh, with this amount of bulk, is just enough to survive in the ex uh, Ice Expedition because she is my frontline tank. Okay, but moving on, we got Sharoon. She's going to get buffed. Uh, not really sure if that's going to help her out much. But I have her on bulky, counter with speed and effectiveness. No effect resistance, because if they're debuffing Sharoon, I mean, we're already winning, right? <laughs> that's a debuff that could have been used to control someone that actually did something. But yeah, we have her on the uh, cooldown uh, decrease of S3, which I find to be pretty decent. I might check out the other EEs later. Um, once she gets buffed and see if there's more synergy between that. We got on touch of Rekos here so that whenever she is hit by something uh, then she'll be healing healing the team up right and because of her speed and her counter she's gonna have some decent turn cycling that goes on. Speaking of turn cycling and speed we got C. Lilius. Uh, she's on a nostalgic music box and she's on a pretty decently fast build. Mine's still pretty slow for where I am in terms of you know uh, high champion standards but with the bulk that she has she'll be surviving things. A little bit of effectiveness to help with some debuffs. I do want to try to make her with more effectiveness but it might come at the cost of bulk and I don't know if I really am a fan of that. Uh, General Pergus is someone I've been trying to use in the last week of the season, uh, trying to use him against uh, units like Flitica and Zeo and, and the like to see if I can try to get away with it. He's actually worked out quite well. I do need to try him out um, a bit more. need to give him a better artifact and anti-magic mask. Um, but yeah, he's pretty decent at keeping the team uh, pushed up and turn cycled. Pretty nice tempo unit, I gotta say. But I might try him out into things like Bellion. Uh, belly with a tech that I'll show you guys uh, in a bit. Okay, next up, Lionheart Sermia. You guys have been asking for these stats. I think they're in the last video as well, but Lifesteal and Crit Set with Proof of Valor. We got our pretty bulky 2,000 defense, 16,000 health with a ton of crit damage. I know she's missing a little bit of crit chance even though she's max imprinted here, but it's because of this necklace. <laughs> If this necklace just rolled one time into crit, it could have been the lowest roll into crit chance, and we would have been okay. I would have been okay sacrificing like a speed roll here for like an extra little bit of crit chance, but I've never really missed that crit chance, so 
it works out just fine. Next up is Little Queen Charlotte. You guys have been asking about this for quite a bit too. Uh, yeah, I changed her build because um, she's no longer on a attack ring. She's on HP ring. Or actually, no, hang on. She's always been an HP ring. She's on attack boot. Now she's on an HP boot. There you go. So, yeah, that's some of her gear. You need to have a lot of attack for her. This weapon's pretty bad, actually. I need to switch that out. But you need to have a bunch of attack on her here. You see 43% attack there. You can't get attack on chest pieces. 38% attack there. 40% attack here. And 27% attack here. So that's how you still maintain a pretty high attack stat while still having HP um, ring and boots. She doesn't need speed boots. So if you have speed boots, you're sacrificing way too much bulk and damage uh, to, to get that. But you could run, uh, depending on your substats, you could run like an attack percent necklace, HP percent necklace, right? Uh, it depends. It depends on what you need and what you have. But these are stats that I have and I think that you should aim for if you're trying to use LQC in a higher level um, play. Uh, her buff is not going to do her justice, she's just going to get some extra damage, but I guess that's fine because I did lower some of my damage to get this extra bulk, but even then you're not going to be one-tapping a Ravis, you're not going to be one-tapping ML Calyrex, you still have a really bad ML Calyrex matchup. Uh, I just bring her, uh, I pre-ban ML Calyrex and I'll fight a Ravis with her though, that is a pretty decent uh, trade-off. But that's because I play standard v standard, I know many people can't afford to pre-ban an ML Calyrex. Uh, we got Hellcutter here for the extra stacks of crit chance and attack, that's why her crit chance is pretty abysmal, is because Hellcutter compensates for it. Wish she got something like a free 30% crit rate or something in, in her passive, that would have been quite nice. Alright, next up we got Bellion, the other unit that stole my Elbrus Ritual Sword. And yeah, she's on injury now, so no longer on a counter build. Injury and immunity, she's pretty fast actually with a pretty decent chunk of damage. Not horrible in terms of bulk either. Uh, she's been working out quite well. I just, um, yeah, I don't really have any complaints about her. It's just horrible because I, when I don't pre-ban her, because I don't, because I have her, uh, if my opponent picks her, it's a pain in the butt to fight. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Injury's working out quite well. I like it way more than counter, because Elbrus still allows me to do that counter shenanigans. This just allows me to fight uh, bruisers much more efficiently. Next up, we got Crimson Armin on that protection immunity set on that Aureus as well. Not much to say about her besides that uh, sometimes I'll switch her from team imprint to self imprint depending on what I need. If I need the effect res for some of my other units, then I'll switch it right before we go into battle. But typically she'll be on the defense percent to help her survive. Alright, next up, LR Crow. Um, yeah, Lifesteal Immunity uh, with Holy Sacrifice as my tech. I did have him on Halag Lance, but Holy Sacrifice has been really clutch. It's actually what stole me uh, a few wins. Uh, <laughs> so, it's pretty good. Uh, he has really good bulk, really high defense actually. I, I probably need to lower the defense for a bit more health or something, but he's actually perfect as is. I'm not going to touch his gear anymore. Um, for right now, unless I accidentally get an upgrade. But yeah, that Holy Sacrifice tech has been amazing. Uh, next up we have ROL, so she's on Adam and Shield along with her Escort buff, so she has so much damage mitigation on her. Uh, really a high bulk for absorbing damage, decent a bit of effect resist, a little bit of effectiveness, which actually works out. Uh, where is it from? Right here. A little bit of effectiveness actually helps because when she gets that effectiveness buff on herself, this makes it so she has about 70 something effectiveness, which is good enough to have a chance at stripping things that have 150 resist, right? So yeah, pretty decent, pretty decent. Uh, next up we have Mursa. I never use her. I don't really know what she's here for, but yeah, she should be on Moonlight Dreamblade. <laughs> Perhaps we'll, perhaps we'll build her up again if we ever try to go for speed imprint shenanigans. Uh, next up, Specimen Says. Um, yeah, he used to be on Windrider. I switched it out to Kisei, so now he has Portrait of the Saviors for that extra little bit of damage and that extra bit of health. Portrait actually gives quite a decent chunk of health too, which is quite nice. Uh, speed and crit set, um, this is enough damage to kill anything that's stunned with his S3. He has pretty good health too, so bulky Spez. Uh, he might need a little bit more of a buff to help him out to be more viable in RTA. I think that would be fantastic because I feel like we're 
we need more units that can nuke, but conditional nukes, right? Like, Euphine is great in aggro teams and stuff, but Spez, like, he can work pretty well in a slower team. I think they just need to give him some more, a little bit more, uh, to help him out there. All right, next up, Spirit Eye Selene. Can't wait for her buff. Uh, got her on Dust Devil. Not sure if I'm going to switch that out to anything, but now, after her buff, she's going to be able to uh, proc her S1 so much more consistently, which is going to be nice. Got her on speed and, or sorry, not speed, uh, lifesteal and penetration set. You'd think she's on speed set given her speed there, um, but yeah, the gear on her is, is kind of cracked. I know some of you guys had asked last time to see her gear, so I'll show you guys right now. 21 speed, 25 speed, 18 speed, 12 speed, 15 speed, and then boots with 45. So the average speed rolls on these pieces are pretty high and quite insane. This is definitely not a relatable build. She is definitely on some of my best pieces that I own. Okay, next up, Tempest Surin actually uh, brought her out a couple times. Uh, she did okay, but not fantastic. Uh, Lifesteal crit set, you know, typical shenanigans. Got her on the Secret Art Storm Sword to help push her up with combat readiness and gives her the attack buff, which is quite nice. If I can max limit break another one of these, that would be perfect. Next up, Astromancer Elena. Again, don't really cleave, don't go aggro, but I do use her in Guild Wars sometimes against uh, counter teams. But this is what I currently have on her Unseen Observer for that extra souls with her passive that acquires 10. Um, yeah, I find her to be pretty fun. It's just not really fitting into my RTA playstyle. Speaking of RTA though, Flitica has been one of my MVPs going to the last few weeks of the season. Uh, I actually re-geared her, she was on a damage build, but I gave her um, a speed effectiveness build again. This isn't as good as the build that she was on before, but it is good enough to bring into RTA pretty consistently and still outspeed a good number of units. Um, yeah, so I would like more effectiveness on her, but it's fine. I got her on Guiding Light though. Uh, she works pretty well into stuff like Zeo uh, and M.O. Calric. Okay, next we got Watcher Shuri. Again, more speed imprint shenanigans. You don't see him in RTA uh, at all, really, but he's still built for me. Um, got some pretty good speed, got some good damage. Uh, it's just whenever I feel like cleaving in something like Arena, I'm able to. Okay, uh, next we got uh, Aeola. So yeah, this is absolutely disgusting. Avert your eyes if you don't like Aeola. So I decided to go for a full effectiveness Aeola. Uh, I ended up thinking about it and I said, you know, what? I don't really care anymore. Um, if I don't pre-ban Aeola, might as well just have a really degen Aeola. And if I'm gonna use her, I'm not gonna use her into debuffers, obviously, but we can definitely use her and uh, strip and silence things like Destinas and DJBs, you know, all the typical cleansers that people would try to take into Aeola but fail because um, effectiveness is a joke, right? Effectiveness always wins against uh, effect res. <laughs> uh, got her on book to help out with some utility for the team. And yeah, this is absolutely disgusting, I know. Let's just, uh, let's just move on now. Uh, Sage Ball and Cezanne. So yeah, I use him quite a bit. Uh, Bastion of Hope here, so he gets extra 70% effect res. So you know, added on to the 170 there, he has 240 effect res, which means it's just perfect to always get debuffed by Zeo every single time. Uh, he's on speed and effect res build. Um, got no effectiveness, I don't need any on him, because if you're fighting cleavers, you're not anticipating a 200 resist, you know unit on the other side. Um, the Sage Ball works out quite well when he does work. Uh, sometimes he's just an auto win, he'll just cut in front of the team, you press S2 and uh, they surrender. So that's quite nice. Next up we got Silverblade Armintha, used in PvE actually, uh, Nightmare Raid against the Arahakan, I believe it is. Um, yeah, getting that burns and stuff stacked is pretty nice. I um, need to give her better gear, but I don't really have the time and she's a really low priority unit right now, but she's a, she is on Abyssal Crown for the stuns to help keep those mobs in that fight, um, uh, prevent them from healing the boss. 
Okay, next up, Solitaria. Um, been using her quite a bit this season, so she's on an effect res effectiveness build. The effect res helps quite a bit, keeps away those pesky random debuffs that come out here and there from the opponent, and the effectiveness is, is very nice because now you can actually debuff a bunch of things as well. So not a full res build, but this actually is more versatile. Uh, would like to try her on a bit more damage or something, maybe a different artifact, but the Abyssal Crown has come in so, so clutch, especially with her S1 um, just controlling the opponent. She can sometimes solo, right? <laughs> solo entire teams just by existing. Speaking of which, um, DJB. So, yeah, he's basically the single most drafted unit in my roster, I think this entire season. Him and like Arawal, I think. But yeah, I actually traded a bit of his effect res away. He used to have 260 effect res, but decided to drop it just a little. I think I traded uh, a necklace. Yeah, I think I traded a necklace away so that he could be faster. Now, 261 speed is actually a very magical number for my DJB because of his Eternus. Now what happens is um, people will pick stuff like Emma Leica a lot into me. And Emma Leica, when you soul burn, she ignores res and she'll put target debuff on somebody. So this will guarantee to proc the Eternus. Now if you soul burn her, she gains 100% combat readiness and she'll just cut, right? Uh, and take another turn. However, because of Eternus and with DJB's current speed, he actually gets more than 100% combat readiness, which means he takes the turn before Leica. And so he'll be able to push up the team, not only cleanse that target debuff, but push everyone ahead of her. And you've essentially just single-handedly... Uh, beat Emma Leica with a cleanser. Uh, <laughs> it's quite a nice tech. I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, thanks to one of my friends for giving me this idea, helping me re-gear the DJB and fine-tune his stats uh, so that he can pull it off. But yeah, now this is my Emma Leica counter. And now if you see me in RTA, please, please don't snipe me. Um, <laughs> but now, now you know. Now you know. Alright, next up we got uh, Doris. So Doris for Guild Wars, really good dark bait. Uh, the, the opponents are going to be attacking into her, like a Ravi's Rylets and stuff that are on defense teams. Got on Prophetic Candlestick, so the more she's attacked, the more chance you can do to reset some of your cooldowns by a little bit. Uh, which gives her actually pretty reasonable cooldown uh, timers, rather than what she usually has, which is actually quite abysmal. Okay, next up we got May Chloe. Didn't really draft her this season, really couldn't fit her into my uh, teams just because the fact that she's too slow. I really like playing tempo-based matches with stuff like DJB up there, but I might need to adapt again, adapt my drafts and see if I can fit her in because she is really nice, especially with her effect res for the whole team, uh, the healing, the attack buff, and the, um, the revive too but we'll have to see if we can make that work. Next up, we got Moon Bunny. So I usually use her in Guild Wars. Haven't really done a lot with her in RTA, but she is good in RTA uh, into certain teams. I just prefer, again, DJB and stuff over her. They're just a bit more consistent. Doctor's Bag for cleansing any debuffs from C. Lilius and shenanigans, especially in Guild Wars, so that you can push up your team and cleanse that attack down, give them the attack buff. Right, next up we got Ruel, so she's actually on some spare gear right now, she's still decently built, usable. Uh, maybe if I like reforge a couple pieces like this thing here, uh, she'll be looking a bit better, but Water's Origin, not used a lot. She definitely needs a little something, because at this point Destina is just a better Ruel. Uh, Bad Cat Armin is stripped unfortunately, but we got, oh yeah, here we go, we got Axe God built up and I wanted to use him near the end of the season but we were a little too far down to uh, to climb up to Emperor. This was a secret tech that I was going to use against LR Krau, against Bellions, against just light units in general. Uh, he is he is a beast, right? This guy on injury, we got him on immunity, he has like almost no speed but he does have a ton of crit damage, a bit of attack, and a bunch of health and defense. Uh, with Durandal, actually, he's going to be quite nice. Uh, been testing him out and in Arena, and he definitely puts in work. I'm very happy with him, so be on the lookout for that uh, in the future. 
All right, next up we got Commander Lorena. Um, she's on a pen set rage set and daydream joker. She's actually fantastic in uh, PvE stuff. So this is what I had her for uh, Nightmare Raid. And it's some spare rage gear. You can see it's like unreforgeable, like level 80 pieces. Got a free rage piece from Automaton Tower and an unreforged randomly rolled uh, rage piece here, but her stats are looking quite good, right? Free pen set here that didn't roll too well. Got a decent ring though, but there's free pen set rings that you can also slap on her. Yeah, very, very nice. Um, been very happy with her performance in, in PvE, so definitely give it a go. You can also one-shot a bunch of hunts with a, a build like this too. All right, next up, we got uh, Dark Corvus. So he's actually on my plus 30 Durandal. You guys love it when I whip out that Dark Corvus in RTA. Uh, yeah, so increased his effect resist by a little bit and gave him a little bit of a better necklace here. And uh, yeah, otherwise everything else pretty much stayed the same. Uh, he is still a menace, and I love, love drafting him. Designer Lilibet is up next. Uh, haven't really used her a ton. Whenever I face a bunch of debuffs, I feel like um, Designer Lilibet always takes the back seat to Ed, but I should be using her a bit more. Uh, she is very, very strong still. Got Draco played on her to increase that crit damage and decrease the amount of damage that she suffers, um, which is pretty nice because she also already has like 300 crit damage and uh, over 1900 defense, so pretty good stat line. I just need to not be afraid to use her. Okay, next we got Inferno Kawazu. This is the build for RTA. Normally I switch out his uh, artifact here, depending on what I'm fighting against in Guild Wars. Uh, he's also fantastic in Ancient Inheritance, so this is what I got going for him right here. Nothing too special, although I do really want to get more bulk. All right. Next up, Lone Crescent Bologna. Got her on Sigurd Scythe, not plus 30, unfortunately, don't have enough copies. But uh, counter set, penetration set, pretty decent stat line here. I do want to try to squeeze out a bit more damage, but looking at her right now, I feel like there's not much I can really do to improve, except maybe the ring. I, I don't really know at this point, but yeah, very happy with her though. Uh, maybe I'll just get some more imprints to, to get more damage out of her in the future. Next up, Martial Artist Ken. Uh, typically he's on Sigurd Scythe here, but I don't have another copy. But yeah, he works out quite well in some Guild War matches, uh, and that's pretty much it. I, I need to kind of tweak his gear if I really want to use him elsewhere, though. Lifesteal with a bunch of resist, but can't really make that happen with the gear that I currently have. Next up, Straze, a good little force ban pick from time to time in a standard v standard matchup. Push up your Straze, he's got a bunch of damage and he can nuke somebody, but um, mine's a little bit slow. I might speed him up a little bit. He's got a Zerg Comet as well. Might speed him up, might drop his attack a little because he is on an attack necklace and it's pretty good damage for someone that has this much uh, attack. Okay, next we got Fallen Cecilia. I uh, drafted her maybe like a couple times this season. Haven't really found any like real good use for her. Uh, Arwal kind of overshadows her right now, so yeah, that's a little unfortunate. Uh, got the Aureus on her. I think the one way I can differentiate her is if I make her really fast or if I give her a bunch of effectiveness so that she can provoke lock people, but. Yeah, that's got to be something that I, I take a look at again and work on for the future. Next up we got Hassel. So she is actually used in uh, Guild Wars sometimes. Uh, I do need to switch her over to the Rocket Punch Gauntlet when I do that. But yeah, with the amount of defense she has, she'll be dealing a bunch of damage uh, with the artifact. And she'll be dealing a bunch of true damage as well with... Um, with her uh, skills, especially with this passive, right? We stack up uh, this 1,000 damage uh, up to 5,000, so it's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, Pylas, the queen of counters here. So yeah, counter immunity set. She actually needs a bit more health. I kind of want to get more, but I don't have the means as of right now. She's super, super good in Guild Wars. One of the meta units right now for offense. You know, you have Rowana and Pylas, and you have any other unit, Lionheart, Sermia, and Mobalona. You can run Alencia and all that stuff. That like just de destroys uh, Shu and Senya teams. So. 
Highly recommend you build her if you haven't already, and she doesn't need the best stat lines to function. You could probably get better, probably not on counter set, but if you had a speed set or something, you could probably easily get better stat line than I currently have. Uh, Troublemaker Crozet is here with uh, speed immunity. He's actually someone I need to look into using a bit more. Um, yeah, so he he pushes himself in terms of combat readiness, I believe. Uh, yeah, see, uh, he can actually do pretty good with uh, his combat readiness push. I don't think he has any other EE that helps here. Yeah, he doesn't have anything else that helps, but he does push himself up by 15%. If you build him fast enough, um, if someone hits the person in the back line, he can actually cut and then push them up, right? So he's a pretty good Zeo counter. Uh, and, and I actually encountered a guy who punished me really, really hard with a tr fast Troublemaker Crozet. So I might tweak his build and look into that as well. Alright, and I think, yeah, he was on something like Halog Lance too. I think it was Halog Lance and um, his passive here, so he gets to push up 25% combat readiness if they hit the person in the back. So, just need to speed him up, and then we can do some little trolling of our own. Alright, next up, Arbiter Vildred. Finally, finally, I took off a piece of gear from him. Um, which one was it? I don't remember. I definitely took, yeah, I took the chest piece off of him. <laughs> Finally, Arby, after what, three or four years of having the same gear never touched, uh, he finally had a gear taken away from him. And I might actually take some more pieces off as I re-gear more of my other units, because I honestly never use them anymore, which is kind of sad. But hey, maybe I can consolidate some Alexa's baskets um, to give him a higher chance of proc and gab. Next up we have Assassin Coley, uh, yeah she's pretty nice because she's at 290 speed with a bunch of attack and a bunch of crit damage, it's pretty good attack for her actually, she's pretty low base stats, um, and she also has the attack EE too, it goes to show how much she's lacking. But Portrait of the Saviors is pretty nice too, I feel like she's gonna get overshadowed by Light uh, Karin when she comes out, but... Hey, Assassin Coley is one of my most wanted ML4s, and I didn't pull her for the first three years of the game. Now that I finally have her, definitely going to be using her. Next up, BBK. Uh, full resist set BBK, and we have her on zero speed and a bunch of damage. Nothing really needs to be said here. Shepherd of the Hollow, once you get low, you deal more damage, and a little bit of evasion, because why not? Helps protect the immortality sometimes, uh, if you get really, really lucky and evade a strip. Okay, next we got uh, Closer Charles on Moonlight Dreamblade. So yeah, he's here on a Lifesteal immunity build. I might need to tweak him as well. I like him being a bruiser and kind of closing uh, up the match, right? Kind of after someone nukes, he'll come up and uh, push up the team again, turn cycle. Uh, he gets to, you know, finish the job essentially, hence Closer, but I don't know, I haven't really tested him out. I need to play him a bit more aggressively if I want to use him, though, I, I think. But yeah, it, just, it requires a bit more re-gearing, a bit more testing. Uh, next up, we got Penelope, who I do like using in Guild Wars. She's pretty nice, but I want to tweak her a bit to be faster, maybe? I don't really know. Uh, I want to have some sort of a Sylvan Sage Vivian counter, but Sylvan Sage Vivian is such a annoying unit. She's typically played with like three supports or two supports and another DPS or bruiser of some sort and Penelope is just a little too vulnerable to fight against her. If they made her like able to counter Sage Vivian or something like that, it'd be pretty nice because of the resource reduction. Okay, next up we got Rylet, our favorite uh, non-dodging evasion person. So yeah, he's not bad in terms of his build, in terms of his damage and bulk. He's got pretty good defense actually for a thief. Um, I would like him to be a bit stronger, but I just don't have the lifesteal or pen set gear for that. Okay, next up we got Wanda. Uh, yeah, she is. Uh, I've been using her a little bit in RTA, actually, uh, like mid season, and she was pretty good. Uh, you can trap your opponent in draft, they go for too many evasion type units, like Aiden and Rylet together. You can definitely punish them with a, a well timed Wanda. Mine's not that fast, but she is on Wall of Order, which helps her actually grant um, Gab, but also gets a barrier equivalent to her attack for one turn, which is quite nice. 
Next up, Briarwitch Isiria, she's on Guiding Light. Uh, her build has not changed since forever, but uh, occasionally I swap out the artifacts here and there depending on what I want. Uh, currently she's on Guiding Light, she sometimes gets on Symbol if, I, if I'm in Guild Wars or Arena to, uh, to hit some evasion targets. Okay, Operator Sigrid, uh, really good with Ahmed actually, I think I had a match where I used her and she paid off really nicely in a, in a kind of an aggro style match. Um, if you haven't seen it yet in the RTA clips, that should be coming relatively soon. Um, her she's on a damage build, so she's not really, really fast, but because I use her with things like Ahmed or a CR pusher like DJB, uh, she doesn't need that speed. Uh, Portrait of the Savior is there for some extra damage, and shenanigans. Speaking of shenanigans, we got Pirate Captain Flan. So yeah, a lot of you guys have been asking about her. This is my build. She's very tanky and pretty fast. 250 speed, 190 effectiveness. This is like my dream Pirate Captain Flan, right? And uh, 20k HP with 1,100 defense and a little bit of attack. You really don't need the attack on her. Um, the best Pirate Captain Flans are the ones that are super hard to kill, like this. Uh, because your burns and your detonates, they're, uh, for the bombs, I know they're proportional to the castle's attack, but they deal so much damage already that you really need that control aspect if you're picking her. Uh, you want the control more so than the, uh, damage. So that's why you got a plus 30, a star of the deep sea, a Ciceria's artifact here. Yeah, definitely, definitely need it if you want to be playing on a higher level. Next up, Arc Demon, a unit that I hardly ever use, but is really good whenever I do use it, I guess, sometimes, when she works. So, counter immunity set, she's got another fairy tale for a nightmare, just a spare copy I had laying around. Um, not much to say about her, she just seals things, right? Pretty good to Ed, actually, so if, if your opponent picks Ed and you don't want to ban him, pick Arc Demon. Uh, next up, we got Champion Zorato. Uh, got him on Aela Violin, just kind of a filler. I might change up his build a little bit, make him a little less bulky and give him a bit more damage so he can be a pretty decent kind of anti-cleave unit as well, like kind of draft him with Ed uh, and then you can just, you know, double counter and probably nuke somebody. So I'll look into that, but my current champsy, I, I typically just troll with him in uh, Guild Wars and try to get him to solo three people by himself doesn't really work out. <laughs> okay, uh, closing in on the last few units, we got Spectre Tenebria, standard little lifesteal build. Mine's pretty tanky, 1300 defense, 11k HP. Uh, I could probably soften her up a little bit for more damage or for more uh, speed, but I like her as she is right now. Uh, Taga Hell's Ancient Book as well for the Soul Burn. Some people run her on like Warhorn and stuff, but I don't really... I don't really feel that. Uh, next up, uh, Zeo. So Zeo, I've actually switched mine up. So yeah, he used to be a damage build, but now he's on uh, effectiveness build. He's on Bloody Rose with 51% more effectiveness on top of 211 effectiveness. Now you might be like, well, has it? That's a bit overkill. Uh-uh-uh. How do you think people debuff my DJB and my Sage Ball, huh? with this, um, but with Jacko getting buffed, I might actually try using a jacko Zeo combo team, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, next up we got DDR, so yeah, he's been uh, a little slower now, I believe I switched his, yeah, this is DJB's old necklace, switched it with DDR, might switch him back to something a bit faster, but this is pretty good effect resist, I actually kind of like that effect resist, his, his speed here might be okay. Um, but we got on Fading Memories to a 25% more effect res. He's looking pretty nice. I kind of like this build, actually. So I might, I might keep him on it. You know, who knows? Uh, and that is pretty much it for all the 6-star units. But we do have some 5-stars here. So Bomb Model Kana, I use her in Earth Expeditions. She's on Bloodstone for some healing, so I don't need to run a healer in that at all. Uh, just 4 DPSs and 1 night, or 3 DPSs and 1 night. Um, I have Tenebria as well for the Earth Expedition, so she's on last tea time, which somehow is max limp broken, uh, and yeah, decrease the duration of the S3 to get more defense breaks going. Got Mascot Hazel, again used in uh, PvE content, she's used in Labyrinth and stuff, uh, and I don't use her in the Earth Expedition anymore, because again, I have Bloodstone Kana, 
but uh, Hazel is fantastic for the greater attack buff in other modes, uh, and, and she works out quite well. Terranar Guard is used for the Fire Expo. Uh, I need to kind of get him some better pieces because I think he has more potential than it currently shows right here. Uh, a lot of dual attack chance, by the way, plus this artifact, which gives even more dual attack chance. Yeah, this guy is the MVP. Uh, next, we have Vivian. So she's used in my Banshee one-shot team, which works out quite well. Um, yeah, this is the stats that I use her in. She's also used in like Golem and some other things too, but uh, primarily used in Banshee one shot. Next up, Free Spiriteria, also used in Banshee one shot. She just needs, uh, I'll show you her stats with Daydream Joker in case you're trying to aim for it. But if again, if you want to see all of my uh, hunts and those teams that I run, I use a lot of level 50s in those. Uh, check that video out on my channel. Uh, but yeah, this is the Free Spiriteria that I use for that. She's also used in other uh, PvE modes as well. And uh, there we go, Singelica used in my Wyvern team right here. That's that Singelica that just failed, apparently. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is what she's rocking. 200 effect res is all she needs. Uh, with a little bit of speed, you have to speed tune your team pretty well. But I talk about that in that hunt video. Uh, super duper water gun shooter for the extra attack and effectiveness and last but not least shadow rose for my banshee one shot team the only one that i use uh that's a six star is euphine who does the one shotting but yeah shadow rose here is uh pretty good for helping set up for everything and again super duper water gun shooter for the extra attack and effectiveness but that is gonna be it for this video guys a pretty long one i know but hopefully you guys have uh you know a bit more insight into my account and the units that i have i would definitely say that um these units are going to be changing throughout the season but you will get another big update at the end of the next rta season with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe for more Epic 7 content. And until next time, take care.